welcome. We are starting today the course called Biotensegrity in Motion. And I have chosen this title because I want us to explore our body as a whole and our body as entirely interconnected. So the tensegrity, the, the tensegrity nature of the body is something that is being more and more revealed and appreciated in, in anatomy. Textbooks are changing, yeah, anatomy books are being revised um, because there has come an understanding that we are not like levers and strings, but that we are in this mass of fluid and web, connective web all around that is keeping us together, that is keeping us mobile, that is reviving all our tissues, that is bringing the nutrients and so on. So there is, um, there is not a way to overemphasize the importance of fascia when we are working uh, with ourselves as biotensegrity, but also it gives us a better sense that we are an organism. So as an organism, we are extending our senses out and we are withdrawing our senses inwardly to make sense of the environment on the outside, on the inside. And then according to that stimulation, according to that understanding and interpretation to make the right choices. So in our work of sensing ourselves and sensing the environment, we are having this intention to gather as much knowledge and as much, so to speak, sensitivity and this nuanced knowing which direction to take, not just here, whether I should stretch or release or whether I should stop a particular exercise or go further with it. That's a little bit of a training, but then mainly in order to be able to develop our intuition and our intelligence around what is really good for us and what is better to leave it behind. So another, another uh, benefit of experiencing yourself as an entity as wholeness, as an, as an organism that moves with intelligence and fluidity and so on, is that things that come along, yeah, the, the different events of your life might temporarily bring you off the center, but by and large, you are better able to integrate these experiences and to kind of like incorporate them into that wholeness of you. Yeah, into kind of like absorb them into the wholeness, digest them better, and hopefully yeah, deal with life events in an easier way. So to that effect, so that we can um, experience ourselves as organism in these sessions, there will be less uh, compartmentalization, even though we don't, we don't fragmentize anyway too much. But in these sessions in particular, we will be feeling whole body movements. So we might be twisting and I will be asking you not to feel just the upper body as you twist, but to also go all the way with your awareness into your feet. Or we might be um, awakening the awareness of particular kinetic chains that are already templated in our body because they played a role in our development as a child. So that's what we're going to begin with today. We're going to do, we're going to go through some developmental movements, revisit some kinetic chains, and then go into hopefully some fun um, balancing and standing um, standing um, practices and exercises. Um, for the next time, I want to say from now, if you can have two tennis balls, that would be great. 
because I didn't say it in my email and I don't expect you to have them now, but if you have them the next time it would be good because we can release a lot of fascia from, the, from around the spine with the help of those. All right, so let's prepare ourselves just by settling into our body and noticing what areas of your body are in connection with the floor. And then would you please visualize yourself as if you were looking at yourself from the outside. So you could be sitting close to yourself behind or in the front or to the side and just have that visual image of your whole body as it is, as it exists in this time and space. So you may be able to see your hair, your head, your upper body, arms, your torso and legs, whichever way you're sitting. And the cushion or the floor underneath. And just become aware that everything that you are experiencing, all the thoughts, all the feelings, all the memories about everyone you have ever met in your life and everything you're experiencing, even right now, my voice and this session, for you is within this location of your body that you are now visualizing. Everything is happening right there. And then maybe you can notice as you are looking at your own body or at your own being that it has a life to it that it is a life. So you can follow that movement is happening. You can notice that movement is happening as your body breathes or as your body is being breathed. You can imagine if you had x-ray eyes, you could see the heart pulsating, digestive system digesting the food, lungs breathing. So underneath this skin that you can see on the outside, there is so much going on and there is a continuous, a constant motion. So we call it a body, as Emily Conrad, the founder of Continuum says, we call it a body, but in fact, it is a constant movement. And what facilitates or what enables this movement is the fascia the nonlinear whole body connectivity that runs through every muscle hugs every organ every nerve every blood vessel, 
and even enables your cells to feed themselves from the blood. So fascia is even that conductor through which your cell can take oxygen and nutrients and expel waste products back into the blood. So let's honor that connectivity by now embodying coming into the body so you don't have to visualize it anymore but just embody yourself feel your breath feel your heart and begin to feel yourself as this organism where everything speaks to everything else on the inside of your body through fluids and through fascia. And then when you're ready, please bring your two hands together and connect them to your heart space, to your heart center. And let the mind be humble in front of that grandness of the body and of its connectivity. Let it be humble and let, let your intention be that the mind learns, that the mind receives this ancient wisdom from the organism. The, the, the organism which always seeks homeostasis, which always seeks to be in balance with the environment. And the most efficient and least stressful possible way of being. Most efficient meaning that it uses up the energy only the energy that it really needs to use and to, to spend. That's the intelligence of the organism. So may we allow the mind to learn from that. And then please release your hands. You can open your eyes. And let's begin. So the kinetic chains, one, one of the, or two of the main ones are the connection between our feet and our head. That's one. The other, between the end of our spine, sacrum and tail, and hands. So we're going to awaken these a little bit with our touch. These chains were very important because they help the locomotion. They help us move in space. So let's, let's find the comfortable position for the legs. The legs can be in front of you. And then you're going to bring your hands to your feet and from there, conscious touch with a lot of sensation, as much sensation that you can have as you go up the legs, up the torso, up the throat, face, and all the way to your head. And then from the head, start to go back down the back of your head, reaching your back outer thighs and back to your feet so this is just one chain yeah feet to head head to feet so you can trace it however you like this was just my suggestion to go up the front and down the back
allow your skin to become responsive, to, to become aware, to start to soften. So our skin softens when, when the touch of our hands is gentle and conscious and thereby full of energy. Yeah? So from feet to the head, and from head to the feet, and then the next time that you come to your feet, let your hands hang there, let, them, let there be some connection between your hands and your feet, and just do a little bit of movement with your head. So it could be side to side, front to back, up and down, but keep your hands at your feet so that part of your awareness is all the way there. The farthest place from your head is your feet, are your feet. Okay. And then what we'll do is we're going to do the opposite. You're going to bring your hands to your head. Your feet are going to come forward. You're going to be aware of the area that you are touching and you're going to simultaneously rotate the feet or move the feet in some other way that your body wants. Okay, and then pause for a moment. And now we're going to go into the sacrum or tailbone to hands connection. So how are we going to awaken that one? Let's have the right leg bent. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do a little bit of a twist towards the right towards the bent knee and away. So just a few times going to a gentle twist and away. And then put your right hand onto your sacrum and continue to twist to the right a little bit and away. Good, and then release the left arm. So the arm is going to start to make some bigger movements and you can be free in the spine to rotate whichever way you want. But my idea here is that you, you try to connect these two places, the distant place of your left hand and the sensation of your sacrum and tailbone. And if you are not feeling the connection, you can picture it. So you can imagine something like a rope that is between your sacrum and your left arm. So that it intensifies that feeling of togetherness of these two places. Okay, and then let's switch sides. So warm up the spine first by doing these little rotations.
and then your left hand joins the base of the spine. You can, the easiest part to feel is the sacrum because it's triangular bone that is close to the surface, close to the skin. But if you can with your fingers, if you can kind of like feel into the bottom part of the, of the sacrum where tailbone begins, that's even better. And then let your right arm arise out of some feeling of continuation there. your breath be a company to all of your movements and then bring the other leg so the left leg to extend try to find a little bit of symmetry and if you can picture the tailbone and sacrum as they are the lowest part, yeah, down here. And then slowly from there, lift your arms as if you were creating a triangle. And just notice how it feels to hold this triangle between sacrum and two arms. You can open them wider or close them, whatever feels better. And then tiny little movements of this triangle. So it's really about the topography of your body on the inside. Okay, then bring the arms slowly down, please. Bring your legs back. So what we'll do is we're gonna have one leg bent, and let's say right foot standing, and the left leg is extended. Okay, then you're gonna have the right arm on top of your knee and the left hand beside you, you know, to the left of your thigh. So here you're looking for engaging the whole body in the movement and you are pressing a little bit into the floor and then the, the pelvis comes off the floor and you go back down. So nothing fancy, nothing too high up, just feeling, okay, so my feet communicate with the rest of my body, my hands communicate with the spine and there is this Hopefully, easy lift. And then we switch. And of course, this leg that is straight can change rotations. So when it's relaxed, it can be more uh, toes out. And then when you engage it and you want to push, in order to lift the sitting bone, you will notice that the foot engages more and becomes a little bit more flexed, a little bit more active. And the search is what is the minimum amount of energy that I need to spend to make this happen. And you can explore having the heel on the floor 
of the left foot, you can explore having the heel off the floor, just, just different variations. All right, once you're back on your both sitting bones, come to your mat, please lie down. And let's have a little bit of a rhythm in our feet. So the feet are pulsing. Remember the whole torso is moving. And here you can, you can really sense that what's happening in your head has to do with what you're doing with your feet. This type of pulsing, and later on we will do shaking as we, when we stand up, is very good for awakening all the fascial uh, receptors in, the, in your entire body. Try relaxing your jaws. When you relax your jaws, the back of your neck can soften and then your head will nod. Okay, and then bring your feet as, as close to your butt as you can while the, the heels are still on the floor. All right, and then take your left hand to your left ankle and come a little bit up with your torso so that you can go more on the left. Yeah, you're going to the side and the right arm can come over your head. So once you are in that position and only then if you are comfortable, you can walk your left foot forward and a little bit out to create some more traction, to create some, um, some more space in the lower ribs on the right side. The head is heavy, it's released into the floor. So first walk the foot back to where it was. And then bring the torso back in the middle. Then start to go on the second side. The right hand to your right ankle. Lift yourself up. Lean into your right side so the left side becomes wide. You kind of um, amplify that with your left arm over your head. And then for those who wish the right foot walks a little bit forward. And then first the foot comes back and then the torso. Pause for a moment in the middle. And then as your feet gently press into the floor, 
lift the pelvis all the way up and then just feel head to feet connection so another triangle and upon your next exhale slowly bring the spine and the pelvis down to the floor bring your knees up hold the backs or the behinds of your knees roll yourself forward to sitting and then let's come to quadruped so on all fours all right so the hands are under the shoulders And the, the hips are over the knees so we're going to bring you we're going to um, push the hands into the floor and we're going to let the tailbone reach behind then we're going to slowly push the feet into the floor as we let the head reach forward So it is these two triangles that we worked with before. Okay, and then the next time that you go from hands pressing, tail reaching, bring your pelvis all the way to your heels and then lift the arms over your head. So this is the, the feeling of tail to hands reach. And then place your hands onto the floor and then push your heel, your feet into the floor to lift the tailbone up. And that's the classical downward facing dog position. So the feet continue to press, the head starts to grow forward. Can you feel the feet to head connection in plank? And then as your hands press and your tail reaches up, you're back in downward facing dog. Okay, so knees are again on the floor. The hands press, the tail is up. And then from there, the whole triangle lifts up. Then you slowly bring it back down. Press to lift up the, the pelvis and then the feet propel the head forward into plank. The hands help the tailbone rise and then the knees come to the floor and hands keep pushing as the tailbone reaches back and then we go for one more round like that so as much as you can feeling all these distant places of your body connect with each other every step of the way
All right, and then the next time that you reach back, instead of going up with your hands, just bring the elbows to the floor, flatten your feet, and pause. Pause in child's pose. There is symmetry, there's folding, and you might be able to feel yourself as more of a, a, an, an organism, as a creature, rather than a thinking person. Breathing, flowing, feeling the ground. So now, from here, um, we're going to slowly come to standing. Um, I'm not sure if we did this before, but there is, a, there is a nice way to come up, which is very useful, yeah, because a lot of times we want to go from the floor to standing. So you're going to have right knee next to your left heel. Mm -hmm. And then go back and forth so that you have this uh, mobility in the hip. Yeah. And I see all of you have hands on the floor. So if you didn't, if you couldn't, you would use, you would use blocks. But since you can't put your hands on the floor, keep them there and just bring some weight into your hands as you lift and come back. Okay, so then you can practice this again. We're gonna do three times on each side. Economizing on our effort, inviting connectivity all throughout as you lift. That was the third, right? So let's switch sides. Yeah, make sure they're close together. So um, left knee is next to your right heel. Mm -hmm. And then you are playing with this forward and back motion. And then feet to head. Lift up and back down. And again, forward and back, forward and back as many times as you like. And then lifting up and going back down. And on the next one, we're going to, as we lift up, we're going to step forward with the other leg and then slowly come all the way up. All right. So now let's find Tadasana, our first standing posture. And I hope it's helpful for you to be aware of head simultaneously as you are aware of your feet. Because the feet are literally holding the head. And if you start to do little walks, mm -hmm, it will be helpful to feel that the head is responsive to what's happening in the feet, yeah? So our head, because of the, the way we live, the way we work, and especially late 
these these last decades with the computer our head is fixed too much so it is a good exercise to loosen up the neck and to walk and as you walk to move your sternum to move your head a little bit it doesn't have to be anything drastic but just to have that whole body responsiveness to what's happening in the feet all right <clears throat> and you can do this at your own time however much you want whichever pace you can be playing with different paces all right let's shake remember i said to you the bouncing on the ground and the shaking as you stand is very good for waking up the sensory receptors that are embedded in the fascia so you can start off with a lot of shaking and then try to make it smaller and smaller so that the motion really goes on the inside all the way to your bones So the most uh, palpable tissue that you can feel when you shake is, of course, the fat. Yeah, the buttocks, the breasts, the hips. And then you can feel muscles. And then you can feel even the bones are experiencing this vibration, this little bit of vibration on the inside. And anytime that you want, you can accompany this with a uh, sound that sounds a, a little bit like it's in the uh, in the throat or in the in the mouth, like it's the sound itself is shaking. Uh, try to really relax the tongue and the jaws and the vocal cords as you do this. Okay, so we're going to continue to shake, but see if you can, while shaking, lean into one side. Mm -hmm. So continuing to shake, leaning into one side, coming back, leaning into the other side. Come back, coming a little bit forward. Coming back and then tiny bit backwards. Be careful with this one, just a little bit of backwards. Whole body, whole body shakes. And come back to the center and then pause. So really come into stillness and feel the vibration that is probably still present as a sensation throughout your whole body. All right, great. So we're moving on. Open your arms to the sides. Now we're going to have the right arm externally rotate and the left arm internally rotate. So in the end, both palms are facing up, but I have twisted them in a different way. And then from there, we're going to slowly twist them in the other direction and in the first. And notice that your torso wants to help in order to enable this to happen so you don't have to be rigid here and just do it as a as a local movement but you can actually help with the natural movement of your torso and then you will f and, and and soften the elbows a little bit so don't hold your arms so straight yeah soften the elbows a little bit and then you can let the movement travel into 
your belly. So the belly is going to start to rotate a bit as well. And the pelvis and the knees. And then you can feel, you can start to feel that maybe your feet are also distributing weight differently when you are here and when you are here. Yeah, and so sorry for keeping you so long with this spiral. Shake out the shake out the arm. And let's go once more. Slowly open, open the arms out and then rotate. So as you do this, can you sense into the connection between your hands and the bottom of your spine? Yeah, if you, can, you can visualize those, those strings if you want, or you can just feel that as the arms move, your sacrum is also following. Okay, and then we're going to step out and in and out and in and you're just going to follow the arm that is opening outwardly and if you don't need to look at the screen then also add the movement of the head it doesn't matter if you're stepping out like this or you're stepping out like this it's it's perfectly fine both ways Mm -hmm. and pause and release shake out the arms okay now you're going to open the arms to the sides again the palms this time are pointing down and you're going to do small movements like this up and down as if you were pressing something down but not just with the palm with the whole arm while doing this you're going to lift one leg and hold the balance and then the arms can go more forward more out but notice that you need to engage a little bit at the center to hold the balance and release okay before going on to the second side let's take the arms a little bit behind interlace them and stretch the arms back and release open the arms to the side start pulsing and then lift the other leg up either stay here or play a little bit with arms moving forward backwards yeah it's fun isn't it and then release this time as you interlace the fingers you can open out and then feel that from the sacrum, the movement comes a little bit forward with the torso, arms over your head if it's comfortable. If not, keep them back. Keep yourself straight up. And then slowly come on up, open the, open the legs a little bit wider. Just pause, stabilizing yourself in this triangle, head to feet. Then with your eyes open, let this triangle come a little bit higher up because you're going to lift yourself on the toes your whole torso lifts you're keeping the head to feet triangle lowering yourself back onto the support of the ground 
and again. And once more. Great. Then open your arms up. So yeah, the next time that your feet land, open the feet a little bit outwardly and then the knees are soft and you can feel the sacrum. So you can take the pelvis a little bit side to side. And while you're moving the pelvis, this fluidity of the sacrum is also experienced in the movement of your shoulders, in the movement of your hands. Okay, and then once you have that, you can bring the feet closer in. And this is the movement we'll do. So you're gonna bend your knees and rotate to the left, but it's gonna come from the connection of sacrum with hands. So sacrum and hands stay connected as you twist to one side. They stay connected as you reach up and then you twist to the other side. So we're not going to hold the pose, but rather we're just flowing through different possibilities of maintaining connectivity in this chain of sacrum to hand. All right, and then once you come back next time, inhale and exhale, release your arms to the sides. Let's have once more this wider opening of the legs and attention on the connection between the feet and the head. All right, further. You're going to step the right foot on the floor next to the left, but a little bit behind. So if you can see my feet, my right foot starts, the tip of the toes are where my left ankle is. Yeah, it's not easy to stand like that. So it's already a little bit ch challenging for the balance. So the right leg is back, yeah? So then the left hand comes onto the right shoulder and then the right hand hugs the left shoulder. And what I want you to do here is to lift the elbows a bit and to move the elbows so that the elbows invite the chest to also move. And I'm keeping my head straight to look at you, but you don't need to. You can take your head side to side and it's gonna be di difficult to balance, but that's the task, yeah? That's the exercise, that's the training of your sensory motoric integration and response. All right, now listen up. The left hand is going to stay where it is. You're going to turn to the right and you're gonna release. I'm gonna show from here. You're going to release the right arm into the air behind you and you're going to come back. So you can, if you want, inhale and exhale or inhale here and exhale as you twist, whatever you like. We are still uneven in the legs. So we are still challenging our ability to stay upright. And once more, 
Yeah, very good. The whole torso, including the head, is turning. Okay, so second side. Left leg is a little bit behind the right one. Pause to find your balance. Remember the head is rooted in both of your feet. Then we're going to have the right hand hug the left shoulder and the left hand come on top. And then here we have these little rotations. Allow them to be as free as possible without losing balance. Include the head in the movement. Observe what's happening in your feet. Really feel the whole body. And then the right elbow is a little bit softer down. You twist, the left hand releases. And come back to the center. Of course, on some days when you are not as balanced, you can do another stance with your feet. You can have them parallel, you can have them wider, and you will still be benefiting from these movements. As you turn, part of your awareness is still with your feet and with the floor. one more and then when you come back parallel your feet relax your shoulders let your weight drop into your feet all right now we are going towards the semi-squat very slowly and then when we are coming back we're gonna go further than straight legs by lifting the heels up okay yeah so then we go back down the heels are on the floor we continue to give the weight to the ground and then i want you to do something with the arms to extend, for example, forward from the sacrum into the hands and then slowly gather the hands and come back. And when you're lifting, bring the chest a little bit up. I don't want to say a back bend, but just some opening of the front. And then the heels come to the back to the floor. The slower you go, the harder it will be. But do something different with the arms, like maybe to the sides. And then from the feet into the head, lift, chest opens, and slowly come back down. Do something, another, another kind of thing with the arms and torso, and then come back. So if you're very balanced, then you are not getting a lot of benefit from this. <laughs> and then you have to find something that is a little bit more challenging for you because it's only when you are in this zone of challenge losing balance a bit gaining again that you are building new neuronal connections <laughs> All right, one more going down and coming up. As a whole body movement and then release. 
give your weight into your soft, receptive, adaptable feet. Great. Now, bring your hands together, interlace them, and the feet are going to be joined. So the inner feet are together. So we're going to start with the hands in front of the chest. Mm -hmm. Straight arms, so straight elbows. And then doing a little bit of circles as if you are drawing on the, on the canvas in front of you. And then you grow this circle a little bit so it's becoming a spiral. And you're feeling what's happening in the feet. So there's some motion there, yeah? And then if you're still comfortable, you can do some infinity signs. There's no right or wrong. This is really only about sensing yourself in movement. All right, and then release the arms, shake them out a little bit. And you can change your clasp. So another index finger is on top. Bring the arms up and start with small circles. Let the movement kind of like trickle down the body so that you can feel the response in the hips, in the knees, in the feet. Yeah. Super. Shake it out. Okay. And now we're going to separate the feet. So the right foot is going to go a little bit back, not a very wide stance. Um, both knees are going to be bending and I'm doing a natural movement of what do I need to do when I want to pick up something from the floor? But I'm slowing it down. So I'm, I'm making it very slow. I'm going down with my right arm because my left hand is forward. And I am reaching. I'm finding something. Both knees are bent. Picking it up. And I'm coming back to standing. And I'll do this three, four times. All right, and then you're gonna have both of your feet, on, both of your heels on the floor, and you can slowly come to fold and lengthen the back as you rest the head, as you rest the neck. You can take a few deeper breaths here. And then your front knee bends, your feet are working, rooting as you slowly come up. And then to challenge again your balance, you're going to lift the right arm over your head and rotate all the way to the right. And then come back, very big arch over your head with your arm, and then go to the same movement as you did before. So you pick something up, you bring the heel down to the floor and you take this something over your head and back towards your back leg.
and the next time that you come down, let your left hand come to the waistline and you're going to lift the back foot off the floor. So how high do you want it to be is really up to you. Your right hand is not touching the floor though. So if you need to put the leg down, put it, but keep the arm hovering. And then the right leg goes back, you come up, you rotate once more, and there you are back in standing, ready to take the second side. So what I didn't say, I should have said, is that the wider you are with your legs, the more stable you are, the less challenging it is for the balance. The, the narrower with wise yeah, you are, the more difficult it will be. So I'm somewhere in between, I'm somewhere here. But you can also go like this if you want. Okay, so the joints are soft, no tensing. They are all responsive. As you go forward, lean into the front leg, pick up something, and you go back up. So the back knee will also be helping, yeah? I am influenced by yoga poses and then <laughs> I go into those classical pyramids and stuff, but actually if you want to help the balance, you will use the back leg as well. And then eventually you start to rotate when you come up. So you pick something up and then you go over your head, rotate around. And then, as you come back, adjust your stance if you need to fold over the front leg. Give yourself a moment off. Rest for the spine if this is restful. I hope it is. And then we have the balancing, so the hovering with the torso. And therefore, your left hand has to grow a little bit more forward so that your uh, pelvis can come forward and your left leg can lift off. And once you've had enough of it, you can again come back. If you wish, you can rotate. And then back to standing in Tadasana. Just the last, last moment of standing, feeling your whole body and your whole volume and your entire weight 
suspended into your feet. All right, great. And then slowly come down to the floor, sitting bones on the floor, and then have a few rolls back and forth, holding the backs of your knees. And then just let your spine come to the ground and rest for a moment. Extend the legs, extend the arms. Relax the back of the neck. Let your navel be drawn towards the core of the earth. All right, and then we're going to bend the knees. So have the arms to the sides, palms facing down. And we're going to start with lumbar curves. So you have space between your lumbar spine and the floor, and you're feeling the sacrum on the ground. So then put the weight of your pelvis into the left side of your sacrum as your knees follow by going to the left. And then the weight trickles down into the middle of your sacrum and then starts to go into the right side of your sacrum as your knees lean to the right. So there's a natural curve in the lower back. Don't try to push your lower back into the floor or anything like that. And then again, coming back to the center, rolling over to the left, and then stay there on the left. And see if you can have your right knee grow long. So the, the right knee is growing almost like away from you, away from the pelvis. And then bring the right arm directly over the head. So not to the left, not to the right, but right next to your ear. And this right arm is growing straight up. Maybe you sense a little bit of this spiralic fascial connection that is spiraling around the leg and then going over the lower back, the, the right side of the ribs, all the way up through the right arm. And then bring the right arm to the side, feeling the sacrum, again roll back to the center. The feet are open, yeah, so the feet are as wide as your mat, yeah, maybe even if your mat is narrow, maybe even a little bit wider. And then pour your weight into the right side of your sacrum as you slowly bring the knees to the left. I mean, sorry, to the right, and then you stay there. 
And with fascia, it always takes time. So you have to wait to be able to feel the left leg growing. And then, once you feel the left torso, the left pelvis and leg long, then you bring the left arm over your head, next to your ear, extended, breathing, and not forgetting the right side of the body. Yeah? So just the feeling that there is a very big difference in what the right side is doing from what the left side is doing doesn't mean that they're not connected and in communication with each other. You're going to come back to the center and again extend your legs. Let your arms be comfortably on the floor, shoulders on the floor, and the breath, the only visible movement throughout your torso. Okay, the last thing before Shavasana, very gently pour the weight of the head into further and further points on the left of your head, just like you did with your sacrum. And then to the right. Maybe you have the capacity to fill your feet with your awareness while the head is moving. And bring it back to the center and as you are released into the floor feel once more feet to head triangle and hands to tail triangle And in the middle where these two triangles intersect, there is the navel space. Uh, if you remember the navel radiation, the very center of our being. Choose whichever position is the most comfortable for you to stay for the next four minutes in Shavasana. So with all this inner connectivity, 
and intelligence, the somatic intelligence that you awaken, then you can really let go of any effort that remains in the body and mind. Because to surrender to non-doing is equally as replenishing and important. It is in these moments of non-doing that everything gets settled and that it turns into something useful, something that afterwards you can revisit and recall. So let this be a time of inner peace, non-forcing, and a deep, deep surrender to the present moment and to your being. You are welcome to stay here in this restful space for as long as you like. And if you are deciding to come up, then first externalize your attention, feel the floor underneath, any sounds coming from your environment as you open your eyes receive the light from around you and then slowly include the physical movement giving yourself any necessary 
stretches or adjustments before you sit up. And then once you are seated, bring your two hands together, connect them with your heart space and acknowledge to yourself with the moments of open heartedness, softness, acknowledge to yourself that which you have received, whatever insight, whatever new sensation you have received from your work and from your body today. And then take a gentle breath in and a slow and soft breath out. Namaste.